how to market your photography business on Instagram. Do you wanna book more clients on Instagram, but you don't have a big following yet? No worries. I'm gonna tell you exactly what to post and how to attract the kinds of followers who actually want to book you. It's showtime. Hello, I'm Mike Lloyd. I run a multi six figure boudoir studio in Silicon Valley, California. And I'll tell you, I was like the last one to get on board with Instagram. It's hyperbole. I did not want to do it because in the beginning it was like, I have this fancy ass camera. Why do I want to take photos with my cell phone and share them to Instagram? Like, I don't care what people are eating. I don't want to post pictures of my food. I want to enjoy my meal. And I felt like that's what Instagram was. And then one of my friends is like, uh, you know, you can just upload your own photos that didn't come from your phone. You can just like transfer them from your computer to your phone and then upload them. And I'm like, oh my God, I had no idea. <laughs> world changed. So then I started diving into Instagram and now I book a ton of business from it. And so can you. So I'm going to give you my five, four, no, let's do five, five tips on how to book clients with Instagram. Number one, I'm going to tell you what to post. Number two, how to use hashtags. Number three, prospecting. Number four, knowing the next step. And number five, setting expectations. Super important. Do not check out early. All right. So the biggest thing I hear from other photographers is I don't know what to post. You know, you post the same favorite photos over and over again. You're like, but I don't get any engagement. I don't know what's wrong. So when it comes to creating any sort of content system, whether it's a blog, it's Facebook, it's Instagram, it's TikTok, a YouTube channel, whatever it is, you want to create content buckets. These are essentially categories of things that are relevant to both your brand and your audience. So with my own boudoir studio, the buckets I have behind the scenes, portfolio images, my own personality, we have client stories, motivational stuff. That's all part of the brand as well. So every post fits into one of those buckets. And, you know, as far as my personality goes, I love burritos and I love Halloween. Those are like my favorite things. I also rock climb and I play disc golf. And so I'm sharing things about myself. Yeah, but they just want photos. Why do they care if you like Mexican food? Because you're human. We're, we're there to make human connections. And it's really, really important to be able to connect to people on, on more levels than just you take photos, they might want photos. Because people don't hire you because of your photographic skills. I mean, like, that's the bare minimum. They hire you because of you. You think I'm qualified? And if they like the same music you do, and they like the way that you write, and the memes that you share, and everything else, they're going to want to work with you versus somebody else. It's the same reason we will shop in a local mom and pop store and pay a little bit more versus buying something on Amazon or going to Walmart, because we want to support people that we like. Everyone does that. So be somebody, and you will attract people who like you. Now, don't try to pretend to be something because you think that's what people will respond to. It's totally fake. People will see the BS from a mile away. So just be you. And the things that you think are boring, mundane, normal, like I'm in California, burritos are effing everywhere, but I love them and I eat a stupid amount of them all the time. And it's just like my thing. So, I mean, it's cool. I post about them and now I get people sending me pictures of taco trucks that they go to and their cool burrito recommendations all over the country. Like that's how we connect. It's magic. And it has nothing to do with my photography, but it's real. Okay. And then the different buckets you create, you're going to track your progress. See, do people respond well to the behind the scenes stuff, to the stuff about me, to the portfolio images, which things do people seem to respond the most to post more stuff like that? Don't post things that people don't really respond to. The numbers and the analytics will tell you it's so cool when you look at those kind of numbers and be like, cool, I don't have to do this anymore and people want that, I'm just gonna do more of that. So there you go. Now you know what to post. Different ways for people to connect, to see behind the scenes, to see what you do. You know, a picture of you and your PJs at your desk editing photos, like that's real. Toddlers running around as you're trying to take a client phone call, super real. People will relate to that. All right, number two, hashtags. <laughs> There's a really funny Jimmy Fallon skit. Anyway, Justin Timberlake, I think it was both. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well, oh, well, oh, well. Hashtag classic. Anyway, how to use hashtags. This is basically like the SEO 
for your Instagram feed. You want to use them strategically. And it's basically a way for people to search for things and then find you. So if somebody's looking for boudoir photographers and they go and do hashtag boudoir photography, that could be literally anywhere in the world. But if they type in hashtag San Francisco, they're going to find cool things in the city of San Francisco. If they do hashtag Bay Area mom, they're going to find things that are relevant for moms in the Bay Area or Chicago or Atlanta or Omaha, wherever you may be. That's how you want to use hashtags. You want to find the things that your clients are actually searching for. So if you type in Upper Peninsula Professional Photographer, because you live in Michigan, none of your clients are searching for professional photographer hashtags. Guarantee it. You're only going to connect with other photographers. If this is just a hobby and you don't want to book clients, groovy, do that. But based on the title of this video, you're here because you want to book clients. So use the things that our clients actually search for. You know, if, if you do family stuff, hashtag Provo family events, things like that, your local chambers, your local towns, local sports teams. And then when you look up those hashtags yourself, you'll see other accounts that post there. Go follow them, engage in their content, get in front of those eyeballs, which leads us to the next thing, which is prospecting. So you can use the hashtags in your own post. You get up to 30 of them, use them all. And I recommend at this point in the game, it is end of 2021, have your post, publish it. The first comment, all your hashtags. Because it doesn't matter where in the list of comments you post your hashtags, original post or in the comments, you'll get the same SEO juice essentially, but you don't want people that to scroll through a long post of hashtags to get through all your content. So stick them in the first comment and leave your content in the actual post. So with prospecting, you can do the same. You're searching the same kinds of hashtags Bay Area Mom, Silicon Valley, CrossFit, whatever you want to look up that's relevant to your audience, see other accounts that are posting, start following them, start liking their stuff, send people messages like, hey, love your local business. I you know, think it's cool that we're neighbors. Hope to see you at a chamber event. Something like that. Just start building relationships with people. You can do this for like 20 minutes a day and it will turn your business around. I don't want to guarantee it because nothing's guaranteed, but it's really going to increase the odds. And just like with Facebook, you don't have to be the one that does this. I have an admin do this for me. So we've hashed out, uh, hashed out, ha. Huh? We've <laughs> made a list of 50 hashtags that are relevant to my area and my clients. She goes through those hashtags for like a half hour a day or an hour a day and just likes posts, follows new people. And when we see that they followed me back, then I message them. That's when I take over because I can see whoever follows me. I thank them for following me, ask them what inspired them to reach out, start a conversation. I'm not trying to sell anything. You could even just be like, hey, you know, thanks for following me. Are you new to the area? You've been here a while. Just get the ball rolling. It's super easy. And again, if you don't want to be the one that does this every day, then pay somebody else. Um, but you can just have your coffee in the morning, relax in the evening, whatever, lunch break at work, and just spend a little bit of time, 20 minutes, game changer for sure. Let's jump back to content for a sec. I want to share with you a funny story. When I was first hiring a social media manager to help me create content, she's like, post selfies, doing all the cool stuff that you do. I'm like, but no one wants to see that. She's like, just do it. And so I started doing selfies with like silly faces because I don't want to do like the duck face, serious, like not that, that serious, but you know what I mean? Like I'm going to have fun with this if I'm going to do it because I don't really want to do it. I think it's silly. Therefore, I'm going to make it fun. Well, I got reposted to like silliest selfies on Instagram or like weirdest selfies or something like that. Uh, and one of my clients actually reached out and she's like, Hey, I follow this other account and you just got reposted there. And it was pretty cool. It was me at a client's place doing a headshot, doing a silly selfie. And, and I got reposted there. It didn't lead to anything, but it was just funny. People are out there looking at your stuff and they respond to the silly stuff, right? It's why memes are so popular. They want to, people want to be on there to have fun and to connect with other people. So even if you think it's ridiculous, ridiculous, give it a shot because you never know what's going to happen. All right. Number four, know your next step. So whether you're prospecting, you're running ads, whatever it is you're doing, you got to tell people what to do. As I mentioned before, the prospecting, once we get them to follow me back, I'm going to send them a message and start a conversation. I'm not trying to sell them anything. I just want to see what their intentions are or what they're up to. And then if they want to know more about why my world, then I'll invite them into my Facebook group or to download a PDF guide, or we'll jump on the phone 
invite them to one of my events, something, but I tell them what to do next. If your posts are guiding people to your website or to join your Facebook group, to join your email list, to get on a phone call with you, to book a session, tell people what to do next. So then you actually have to know what do you want people to do? Because you can build an audience of 2 million people, you know, have great engagement, all these things. But if you don't invite people to book you, they're not going to book you. On that note, you don't need 2 million people. You could have an audience of like two to 300 and still book clients. You don't need that many. You just need people who are engaged with your content and that want to potentially work with you. Don't be discouraged if you don't have that 2 million person following and do not buy followers. That's a no-no. It's way better to have 200 followers that like and engage with all your stuff than to have 10,000 followers where only 200 people like and engage with your stuff. So keep that in mind. And then number five, set expectations. You're not going to start an Instagram account today and book out your whole year next week. It's just not a realistic expectation. So Don't be hard on yourself when that doesn't happen. Instead, think, okay, I'm going to track my numbers. I'm going to see, is my following growing at a consistent pace? Or what things am I doing to help the following grow? Maybe these hashtags aren't getting you the right kind of eyeballs, so try some new hashtags. Maybe that helps to raise your following. Maybe you're not asking questions in your posts. You're not encouraging people to engage. You're not asking for opinions, sharing stories. You're not creating content that fosters engagement. So if you start doing that, you know, you're going to notice your engagement going up. And when you track the numbers, it'll tell you what's working and what's not. Do more of the things that work. Do less of the things that don't. But it's a long game. It takes time. So if you spend a half hour a day building your audience, don't plan to book anyone for a couple months out. But if you do it consistently, you know, like the 90 day marketing plan is kind of what I go by. If I start prospecting now, I plan to book somebody 90 days from now. That being said, 100 days from now, that will be affected by what I do 10 days from today because I'm just moving that 90 day window. So as long as I start now and I don't stop, I'm going to be continuously having leads coming in starting in 90 days. So that's what I suggest you aim for when it comes to Instagram or email or literally anything. Plan for a long game, get started, track your numbers, and then the money will come. It's inevitable. You just got to stick with it long enough to actually see it happen. So there you go. My five tips to bringing in more clients from Instagram. Firstly, now you know what to post. You know how to use hashtags. You can take selfies that get you reblogged on silly selfie accounts. Number three, you know how to prospect. You know how to find people using hashtags. Number four, tell them what to do next. And number five, set some realistic realistic expectations for yourself. Now, get out there, grow your following, make some money.